Europe's ecosystems are in danger, but human activity is not the only culprit. Introduced to our continent on purpose or not, many exotic species such as these are putting European biodiversity in danger and threatening the fragile balance of nature which surrounds us and allows us to live. The problem is widely underestimated, and wrongly so, because in addition to environmental damage, the presence of these invaders has serious socio-economic consequences. Every year in Europe, the cost to industry, agriculture and society of managing and repairing the damage caused by these invaders is at least 12 billion euros. So the European Commission is making the fight against invasive exotic species a priority objective. Prevention is the best weapon. Controls need to be established throughout the EU. But of course these checks will have their limits, especially for species that have been here for a long time. Other measures are therefore necessary. This is the Ebre Basin in northern Spain. For some years now an exotic species has colonized the river and its tributaries. Native to the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea, zebra mussels arrived in Europe on board ship. Inedible, they breed and spread quickly and do considerable economic harm to the environment wherever they settle. The main problem with zebra mussels is their great ability to reproduce and to filter water. This water filtration results in a reduction of oxygen in the water, leading to fewer nutrients and an increase in the transparency of the water. This in general means a loss of biodiversity in the water and native species being forced to move. But it's not only nature that suffers. Water from these rivers is also used for irrigation and zebra mussels clog the system. As you can see, this stone trap is completely blocked and we can't irrigate. We have to clean it to be able to carry on with irrigation. The problem is far from being a minor one. These farmers in the Tudela region installed this irrigation tank five months ago. After just a few weeks, they realized that their irrigation system was no longer working. We have a buoy that starts the engine. There were so many muscles that they had deactivated the automatic engine start mechanism. It was then that we became aware of the problem and began to clean it. We lost 20% of the harvest in 80 hectares of maize. You can easily see the extent of the problem if you look at the blocked irrigators. We've hired two full-time people to remove them. Removing the muscles by simply tearing them off is one solution, but it's not always possible. There are ways of combating muscles in closed areas, but outside there are no efficient methods. There are only methods of management to try to limit the problem. The Spanish authorities have therefore established a system to monitor the propagation of larvae and mussels. Disinfection measures on boats, the main vectors of the invasion, have also been established. Zebra mussels are now present in a large part of Europe and they do damage wherever they settle. Their spread must absolutely be prevented. Anyone who takes a walk in a London park will have noticed the presence of grey squirrels. These small mammals are seen as cute and cuddly, but this is far from the reality. Originating in North America, they were introduced to the British Isles in the 19th century as domestic pets. Since then, the population has continued to grow with serious consequences today. Brenda Mayle specializes in grey squirrels. She works at the Alice Holt Research Center in the south of England. The grey squirrel's most significant impact has been on the uh, native European red squirrel and where the grey squirrel has expanded in distribution throughout the UK, we've seen a decrease in the presence of the red squirrels. They compete for food and the major impact of that is to reduce the reproductive rate of red squirrels but more significant than that has been the presence of what is called squirrel pox virus. 
Surprisingly, although we believe the grey squirrel carries the disease, it would appear not to have an effect on the grey squirrel themselves. The number of red squirrels is therefore rapidly decreasing, whereas the grey squirrel, with no real predators, continues to thrive. And it isn't just other squirrels that are at risk. For reasons which are largely unknown, the grey invaders gnaw the bark of young trees, which can no longer develop and end up dying. This has a significant impact on the timber industry. This, for example, would be no use for um, the timber industry at all. So there is a severe economic implication. The research scientists at Alice Holt are exploring several avenues to try to solve these problems. The option of fertility control is something which we are investigating at Forest Research here, um, but it's not something which will remove the squirrels. The only way to tackle the problem is to remove them, and the best way of doing that is really to trap them. Grey squirrels are also appearing in northern Italy. There too, controls are necessary to prevent invasions of neighbouring countries. Invasive species are not only exotic animals. Two years ago, Patrick was the victim of an exotic plant. I was clearing weeds and I got the sap of this plant on my arms and was burned. You don't feel anything at the time. It's only after a week that it flares up and you get the wheels. The plant in question is Heraclium mantigazianum, the giant hogweed. Having been imported to Europe in the 19th century as an ornamental plant, this impressive species gradually spread across the whole of northwest Europe. Thanks to its ability to implant itself easily in all environments, it's to be found today alongside roads and watercourses, as well as in forests and urban areas. It's a real danger to people because its sap contains a toxic substance which, when it comes into contact with the skin and is exposed to light, causes potentially serious burns. And the giant hogweed also threatens the ecosystems which it colonizes. It's a very tall plant with big leaves which create a lot of shade at ground level, reducing the ability of previously present native species to germinate. So little by little it takes the place of other species, removing them by reducing the available habitat. And so it threatens the indigenous biodiversity of the country and the region where it establishes itself. There are efficient ways of getting rid of this destructive plant. However, it's necessary to wear protective clothing and do it before the autumn. Right now isn't a good time to manage them because you can see that the seeds are there and so this year it's too late. Normally you have to do it in June or July when the plants are in flower but there's no sign of the seeds. Management in summer consists of cutting the weed 15 centimeters beneath the surface pulling out the umbels and burning them in an incinerator. It's a tough job, but essential to prevent the seeds appearing and dispersing, thereby preventing the giant hogweed, which is already present in large areas of Europe, spreading elsewhere on the continent. These three invasive exotic species pay no attention to national borders. Cooperation at European level is therefore essential. That will be the cornerstone of the strategy planned by the European Commission to counter these threats. The issue of invasive alien species is not new for Commission and we have been doing some work already, especially in identification of the species. We have several projects on that. But what is needed now is to agree on the action. First of all, uh, are preparing the early warning system, which will require a close collaboration of the member states. And in addition to that, we will have to decide in response in which species we are going to eradication attempt and in which species we only can control. It is in any case necessary to take coordinated action at all levels, because as we've seen, the stakes are high for Europe's economy, its ecology and its health.